All right, good morning, guys. I got a 2018 Subaru Crosstrek over here. The customer is saying that when she drives it, it sounds like a dirt bike is chasing her. I, I kind of figured I knew what it was when she started saying all that. Um, I've been seeing on a lot of these Subarus, the wheel bearings starting to make noise on them. So I drove it. The wheel bearing in the back is definitely making some noise. So I'll go ahead and just show you that video now. Hopefully you guys can hear it in the video. All right, so I got it up in the air now. If you have a noise that you would describe like that, or a lot of people describe it like the sound of an airplane trying to take off, you've got a wheel bearing issue. So then the next thing you need to do is figure out if it's in the front or in the rear. Generally, a rule of thumb that I use, it's not 100%, but it's, it's pretty accurate. If you move the wheel side to side when you're driving down the road, if the noise changes as the vehicle shifts side to side, then typically the noise, it's gonna be from the front. And if not, then it's gonna be in the rear. Um, a lot of times you can kind of tell too where it's coming from, but I definitely hear it in the rear. The next thing I want to do is with the car off the ground, I can actually spin the wheel by hand. And I do hear like a growling noise. I do hear it a little bit from this side. Let me go over here and I do the same thing. Yeah, I kind of hear it louder over here. I kind of hear it on both sides, but I hear it louder over here on the left. So let me do this. Let me get somebody in the vehicle, put it in drive, spin the wheels, and let me get underneath it and um, see if I can hear a little bit better. All right, so I got my listening device, which is a long screwdriver. All right, so let's, I'm gonna put it right, I'm gonna kind of put it right there and then listen with my ear. Okay, I definitely, I definitely hear it more on the, I definitely hear it on the driver's side. I thought when I had it on the ground, I thought I heard it over here too when I was just spinning it by hand. But definitely this side right here on the driver's side is loud. I'm gonna put the screwdriver like right on the bolt for the bearing. Okay. Okay? Yeah, as he picks up speed, it's definitely loud on this left side. Okay. Okay? Yeah, so I don't know if I explained too well, but with the screwdriver, I put the end of the screwdriver um, actually on the, on the bolt of the wheel bearing on one of the bolts where the hub bolts to the knuckle. If you put it on the bolt, you'll kind of hear it better. And then on the the rubber end of the screwdriver, the, on the grip, on the handle, I put it up to my ear so I can hear. Definitely the left side this is really noisy. So let's see what the uh, labor time is for this kind of a job. All right, so as you can see here, if you look at the bottom of the computer screen, uh, the labor to do one side in the rear calls for 1.3 hours. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the repair. All right, so here's the new bearing, Precision. We got this from O'Reilly, part number 512518. So show you what the new one looks like. So as you can see, it's a whole hub assembly, which is good. So there's just four bolts here, 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 and here. So there's four bolts that hold it to the, to the spindle. All right, step one obviously is get the tire off and it looks like they already have a broken stud so that's good for them they're gonna get a whole new 
hub, so I just gotta get a new lug nut. So with the tire off, uh, let's go ahead and disassemble the brake caliper bracket and get that off. So basically there is a bolt here. One right there. And then one right here. They are 17s, I believe. So let's get those two bolts out. Let's break these loose here. Now let's get the one here on top. Okay. Now we're not changing brake pads or anything, so there's there's no need to undo these and these. Just leave them, pull off the whole caliper. And I'm just going to set this it's on top of the rear control arm, just kind of out of the way here. And um, the rotor should come off. I may have to give it a whack. I'm just gonna give the rotor a whack with a rubber mallet and get it to break loose. Now what I'm actually gonna do on this next step, it takes a 32 millimeter socket to remove the axle nut. I could easily just with an air impact, I could uh, take this off right here up in the air, but I understand a lot of y'all don't have air tools. So I'm gonna show you guys, I'm actually gonna do it how I would do it if I didn't have an air tool. So let me show you guys how to do that. All right, so if I didn't have air tools, the way I would get the axle nut off is come over to the tire and the little center cap punch it out. Okay, and then from there, put the tire back on. And I'm just gonna put two lug nuts on just to hold it in place. All right, they don't have to be super tight, just enough to hold it in place. Now what you wanna do is you want to lower the car down on the ground. That way the hub won't try to turn and then you can actually stick a socket in there and loosen this nut. So let me get the car down and I'll show you. Okay, so the car the car is down on the ground now. There's weight on this so the tire is not going to spin. Now you can take your 32 millimeter axle nut socket, stick it in here. And now you'll actually be able to break the, the socket loose. Or I mean break the nut loose rather. It's gonna be pretty tight. But once you break it loose, it should come off fairly easily. That's it right there. That's all you gotta do to get that nut off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it back in the air and get the tire off and I'll show you what to do next. Really what you wanna do now is the axle is stuck in the bearing so what you want to do is hit this and try to push that shaft back out now you're not going to slide it all the way completely out through the back but the axle will move some so you want to basically break it loose to where when you get the bearing loose you can slide it off of the front so the way that i would break it loose would be i'll take a punch like this and i'll put it right in the hole in the middle and hit it with a hammer sometimes with a, a dead blow hammer you can you can hit it straight on and uh, get it to break loose. But uh, I wouldn't hit this directly with a, a metal hammer because you could damage the axle and then you won't be able to get the nut back on. Let's give it a few whacks like this and see what happens. All right, y'all can see, see it's loose now. So that's good enough. So now really what we wanna do now, there's two bolts, two bolts here and two on the other side. And the bolts that hold the wheel hub on, they are 14 millimeter bolts.
right, so we can see now with those bolts out, the whole hub is, is loose from the spindle. There we go. Yeah, so there's just enough room here to where you can actually take the bearing out without having to remove all the brake shoes and stuff, so that's good for us. I don't really think it's gonna hurt anything to just hang there. All right, so here's the old bearing. It does feel a little, a little gravelly when you turn it, so let's go ahead and get this new bearing on. That slide slid in there. I'm gonna slide the axle shaft through. All right, so I'm just gonna get a uh, bolt started. Uh, I'll try to get a bolt started on either side here in the back. As you can see, you can kind of look in there and see if your bolt holes are lined up. So I got a bolt started right here. I don't have one in here yet. And then I got one started down there on the bottom. All right, so let me get these other two bolts started in here. All right, so I'm just gonna go around all four bolts and kind of tighten them in a crisscross pattern until they're snug, and then I'll torque them down. All right, now these bolts for the wheel hub, they get torqued to 63 foot pounds. All right, we're looking pretty good. We just got to get the axle nut back on. So I'm just gonna tighten it as much as I can right now. Okay, good enough for now. We'll, we'll finish tightening it once it's on the ground. All right, let's put the rotor back on. And I always find here when, uh, when reassembling the caliper bracket back on, this rotor is, is loose 
and so it can make lining up the bracket tough. So what I do is make sure the rotor's fully seated. I'll take a wrench like this, I'll put it on one of the studs, and then I'll take a lug nut. And what I'll do is I'll just simply tighten it up. Like this. And what this will do is it keeps the rotor in place securely so I can slide the caliper bracket back on without worrying about the rotor, you know, flopping around and making it hard to line up the caliper bracket. So I'm gonna get this caliper back on. See, with the rotor secured, it makes it easy. If the rotor's trying to fall off, then it's gonna be uh, really hard to, to get this caliper bracket back on. Here's the uh, bolts, so I'm gonna get those reinserted. get this wrench off all right now I'll get the wheel on and we'll do the final uh, tightening of the axle nut This axle nut gets torqued to 140 foot-pounds, so that's what I've got it set to. Alright. After you tighten the axle nut, you're going to want to raise it back up in the air, take the wheel off, and then uh, you're going to want to take a, uh, a punch or a screwdriver or something, and you're going to want to hammer down that lip on the nut and uh, hammer it into this little notch in the axle shaft. And you're gonna wanna do that so that the nut doesn't by chance loosen up over time. Actually, I had one one time that I didn't do that. I, I didn't hammer it down and it ended up coming loose months later. So definitely always hammer down that, that part right there of the, of the axle nut. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. See, that's good there now it's hammered down so it's not going to come loose by itself over time now on these smaller lug nuts like this i'm always a little apprehensive about using an impact uh, the actual torque spec on these lug nuts is 88 foot pounds of the smaller ones like this they're easy to over tighten so i'm just going to go ahead and torque them Get the center cap back on and i'm still waiting on that missing lug nut to show up but in the meantime let's go ahead and drive it and see how it does all right let's see how it does definitely not there anymore yeah I definitely don't hear it now before it was pretty loud all right guys so we're just getting it washed and cleaned up right now so this is a repair completed so thanks for watching guys appreciate it